Hey, welcome back. So in this video, what I'll be doing is welding on some tabs that hold the CNC machine down and then making sure that everything is level. So I have the uh, center tube welded in now and that's what it looks like. What I've done is I put in a big fat weld, probably I think it was like a double weld, and just put it on the top on each side. The side over here, I don't know what happened. Maybe I had bad gas coverage, but uh, it would kind of turn out kind of shaded. But it's it'll hold, so I'm fine with that. And patched all the all the little holes, so there's four on each each side, so 16 in total. So they turned out all right. I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to focus. No, it's just too bright in here. But yeah, the outside is fine, and that tube is done. So now that the tube is in there, I can slide the entire machine on the two rails if necessary. And that's going to help with uh, welding these tabs on here. So I've already gone ahead and just cleaned up some of the rust and mill scale and stuff just to prep it for welding. And I'll show you what they look like. Tabs. So we have some, some tabs here. This is a quarter inch steel and they're drilled and tapped. So they're just gonna go, Let's see if I can do this one hand. So there we go. So they're just gonna go on there and I'm just waiting for bolts now. And then what the plan is, is to bolt them in place and then that way the, the holes are gonna sit correctly and then I'll just tap weld on the ends and keep it in place. And then probably what I'll do is, as a final thing, I'll move it off to the side and put a bead on the top. So I have all the tabs bolted on, and as you can see, their bolts are a little too long, but buying the stainless steel bolts on Amazon, it was far cheaper, like three times cheaper to buy them this long than it is to buy any other size. So. So the plan is to tack these into place on the sides right there and hopefully put some stuff in the bottom upside down. Uh, I don't know how well that's going to turn out, but yeah, we'll have to see. Once I have them out, I think I'll uh, cut these bolts to the right size with a, like a diamond cutoff wheel and see how things look. All right, so the sides and bottoms are done, uh, welds. And what I was able to do for the bottom was, let me zoom in there. So I uh, basically just melted them together. I couldn't get under there with the, uh, it was just really, really awkward. So, but it turned out great. And all the holes, all the bolts are aligned. And all I gotta do now is put some, just weld the tops of these and then uh, make sure it's all flat. All right, so I just finished welding the tops of these and here they all are. That's how they look up close. Turned out pretty good. And yeah, actually when I, so when I was welding the bottom, I had to have the machine in place. And so the paint got a little discolored, but surprisingly it held up pretty good. So some of them, like if you saw the last video, this tab, for instance, is uh, slightly raised up. Still, still extremely hot. I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> uh, so what I have left to do now on the ones that are not perfectly level, well, basically what I'm gonna do is take a a long uh, level and just make sure that, for instance, the the plane, the surface of this matches probably some little beads of of wells and what I'll have to do is uh, grind them so they, they all line up. That way the entire machine is not just sitting on this one, the load is going to the actual beam. So I just have to uh, go through some of these, like for instance this one, uh, it looks like, am I figuring? Yeah, so it looks like this area here is a little bit too high so I have to just go over with a, a grinder or a file and make sure everything is flat. After fitting all the bolts, I've gone with a permanent marker and marked a line where the bolt is too tight. 
So there's two bolts on this side. So I'm going to go use a die grinder and open up that side just so the bolt goes in freely. So all the bolts now spin freely and can be bolted down now. I ended up switching to a, a diamond impregnated tip on the on the prox and the uh, the die grinder one I think is probably tungsten carbide. It just didn't hold up, but the, the diamond one did a lot better job. It was quick work. Here's a close up of the result. I also went around and cleaned up the edges. You can see over on here. Some of the edges were a little sharp, so clean that up a bit too. I'll be working on leveling the CNC machine to the frame now. And the CNC machine and frame have nine points of contact. So three on three there, three there, and three there. And the ones in the center on these two, they have the biggest gap. So that's on the outside. This is the middle one, it's a lot less. And then this one's actually touching. So my level is too big to fit onto there, so I'm going to use this piece of steel. And it's reasonably flat, and I'll use that as my reference surface. And what I'll do is start with the outside where the tabs are. So this one and then the far one. Uh, get those level. Do that for all six on the outside. And then the ones on the inside, I'll get it so those ones are just slightly touching. So there's a bit of an interference surface. And then that way, when the bolts are down, uh, there'll be some positive pressure. I'm almost out of argon, so I'll probably have enough to do one beam and then I'll have to get more to finish the other two. I'm using the angle grinder to knock out the high spots. So you can probably see it on camera there, that scratch right there. So what I'm doing is taking this and just rubbing it, rubbing it back and forth on both sides. And that'll just reveal any of the high spots. I was gonna use a die cam blue, but it's not necessary because it's easy, like they're easy to see. So what I'll be doing is once those are, are oh, just really just this one now, this side over here is like there's, it's down there. So it gets pretty much flush with the tabs. Um, I just have to knock out this one a little bit more. And then what I'll do is I'll build up a low spot, which is in the center and raise that with some, some of the tick ball. It's still it again. Look at the size of these snowflakes. This back surface is done now, and using the grinder works really well because all you're doing is, after you scratch the surface, is just use the grinder to remove that scratch. And like it, it takes you, like you can take as much of it or as little off as you want. I'm generally just taking off just as much so that the, the scratch is removed, and then I do it again. And like this back surface took probably 20 times or so to to get a uh, level, but it is now perfectly level in the back. All, all the high spots. Uh, this part in the middle here, this is a low spot. And what I'm gonna do is uh, probably, what I'll do is put a square in here, a weld, and then um, cut the corners out. And then what I can do is once the machine is in place, I can fill in the inside with epoxy. And that way I don't have a cavity where water can form and rust away. And the combination of the steel and epoxy will make a nice, good flat surface for the this beam to be uh, resting on. The last thing I've done is raised each corner uh, and felt the sort of roughly how much they weigh, uh, and and take down the heaviest ones because this corner and the far one over there, uh, it's the whole machine's kind of pivoting on that, whereas the uh, well, where the level is right now, that that angle is uh, a little bit uh, lower. So, if I if I were to pick up that side, uh, I would notice it's a lot lighter than if I were to pick up this side. And same for the other side. So, like this this side is very heavy, whereas this side feels lighter. And I've gone uh, through and and with the grinder taken down some material on this side on the tabs and the surface. And same with this one. And now I've gotten the the whole machine uh, feeling like it's all flat. And one strange thing I've I found was if I were to take a 
reference surface and put it along these three tabs. And same with the, the far side. The tabs in the middle are higher than, than the other two, which doesn't really make sense. So it's possible that uh, this beam here is dimensionally smaller than the two other beams. And that's probably what happened because I know that I replaced this beam uh, from the original material and I, I ordered this piece of steel later at a later date whereas this one and the one on the other side and well pretty much all of the um, the steel that is that dimension it all came from the same uh, straight beam that was cut up so yeah it just it just goes to show like you gotta you gotta work with uh, your actual surface and and uh, kind of know where you're taking dimensions from because uh, you can't always assume that everything is straight and everything is dimensionally the same size. So that covers everything for this video. Next time what I'll do is work on walling the boxes that go down the center of the frame. Thanks for watching.